What's good with YouTube? Y'all already know. Big Flacco from ACP, a convex perspective. Hoping everybody's having a positive, productive day. We're about to get into a good video, but before we do so, please hit the like, subscribe, comment, do all those things to help support your boy, and hit that bell notification for future fire content. As you can tell by the title and thumbnail, did the Nuestra Familia ever have any type of working relations with the Italian Mafia? I'm going to tell you I'm able to confirm that yes, they did. As a matter of fact, in San Jose was one area that they did have a relationship with the Italian mob. Now, the Italian mob is pretty much dead in San Jose today, but during the 60s, 70s, and 80s, there was a little bit of a, they had a little bit of a, a presence out there, you know, with basically two families that were pretty much working together, the uh, Cerrito family, as well as the Bonanno family. Now, the areas where a lot of the Italians were um, located were places like Little Italy, um, Rose Garden, Willow Glen, and uh, Stevens Creek, the Alameda. All that area pretty much had Italian ties. In particular, a lot of the car lots at that time on Stevens Creek Boulevard were tied in with Italian mob figures. Now, Willow Glen is a very upscale, rich neighborhood, right? But right next to it, is an old vario in San Jose, one of the biggest, oldest varios in San Jose, that being Vario Horseshoe. There was a time when um, a capo at the time, I believe, Salvatore Marino, right, who later became the underboss for the area temporarily, was actually taxing those that were in the Vario Horseshoe area who were operating and basically slinging drugs in the area. That went on for maybe about six months until the NF found out about it. And pretty much what ended up happening was the NF did some pushback upon the Italian mob at that time. At that time, the Italian mob only had about 16 made members in San Jose. And pretty much did their homework and some research about the NF and pretty much backed on up. The Cosilera at that time was an individual named Mariano Gutadero who also advised Sal Mariano that it would be in their best interest to back up and not to press up on the horseshoe or the Nuestra Familia at that time and instead start to build maybe a working relationship with horseshoe and the NF now I remember talking to Lencho several times right and having several discussions and he used to talk about working for the Banano crime family in San Jose back in the mid 80s um, which as we already know he caught his time around 1989 so definitely a horseshoe and, and the Italian mob actually did have a relationship for some time as far as just Whatever type of uh, jobs needed to be done, it was basically freelance work out there in the streets, whether it was to go take someone out, you know, go collect a debt, go extort someone. That's the type of crimes that they were doing on behalf of, you know, the Cerrito family and the Bonanno family at that time. Also, I did some jobs for Raymond J. Johns, who at that time was under uh, public scrutiny because he was a suspect in one past strangulation of a female. And later on was convicted later on and sentenced to death row. Now at that time he had certain members that were basically testifying against him. One of them being Weasel and a few others. That he actually contracted out a hit on these individuals. So uh, a lot of individuals that were in the undercrime world at that time in San Jose. Which is a total different place today. Right? You had individuals that had power, that had influence, that had money. And a lot of those jobs that were being done at that time were being basically filtered to the NF. And at that time, some of the main um, drug distributing families out there, as far as you know, the Rasa, right, that were connected with the NF, right, were also doing business and had relationships with some of the Italian factions as well. Um, this goes all the way back to 2002, you know, uh, with the connection to Las Vegas and AZ as far as with the production of PCP that was going on in the San Jose area. So the Italian mob, which was very short numbers, I think 16 made members in San Jose um, and associates as well, right? I don't know how many official made members were there, but they found it in their best interest to basically hire those that are working for the NF and Horseshoe as opposed to taxing them. Because all it took was that one time for it to get back to the NF that these individuals were paying taxes. And then have clearly let it known that any street gang in San Jose was not going to be paying any taxes to the Italian mob. Therefore, the relationship with the Italian mob started around that time. And like I said, you had individuals that were actually working for these families. That just didn't stop with just the, the Italian mob. It was anybody that was in the criminal underworld. Anybody that was pushing product, product or was involved in any type of illicit activities. 
back then you had individuals that would be known out there in the streets, you know. It's a little different now. You don't get the notoriety as far as, you know, who's the main dude out in the streets and who's calling shots and who's part of this clique and, and whatnot. Everything is a little bit more, I'm going to say, I'm not going to say watered down, but you don't have elite individuals running organizations or crime rackets because they get indicted. Then after the 1990 indictments with uh, Lucky, Silent, and all them, right? When the NF was, I think, responsible for, they say, I think, 13 to 14 murders just in that one year. Those relationships started to uh, be severed. And these individuals that used to be uh, in control of the underworld, their presence and their stature was no longer out there like that. It pretty much was now the NF was running everything out there in San Jose, period. A lot of those that were previously doing criminal operations, what they were doing was they were either hiding what they were doing in San Jose, or they just split and just stopped doing business out there, or they turned all their uh, ventures into legitimate businesses. So yes, the NF did have working relationships with the Italian mob for a time being in San Jose, California. I don't know about any other cities. I don't know about Salas. I don't know about San Fran. Sacramento or any of those areas right but I do know San Jose a hundred percent for sure and, and I've even heard Lencho speak about it this is around the time that I, you can sit there and honestly say it was a change in the guard based upon the fact of what I mean by that is that before you had people like the Palacios the Blancos and you know uh Machacas and all these individuals the Spencers that were involved as far as in the you know I'm saying pushing product and having to come into the, the city by the 2000s they were no longer as active as they were in the past and you started to see a lot more individuals coming from Mexico that were tapped in that were coming into the city therefore they were the next ones that had to sit there and pretty much pay the piper and start to contribute just to operate while they were out there up until then people that were from um, Mexico or Mexican nationalists as you can call them or Baisas they really didn't have a strong presence as far as in the dope game as far as in San Jose 2000s that started to change you started to see their presence that you started to see them set up shop different cells and different operations and they had their own type of chain of command and depending on who they were working with uh was going to say who you were connected with like the san jose for a long time was connected to the gulf individuals for the gulf cartel and i remember when it was established sometime in the mid 2000s that anything that was coming into san jose it was supposed to go through the NF hands. That was established with those that were on the other side of the border, as well as those that were on this side. And that was a relationship that was pretty much worked on out with several individuals. How it is now, I, I would assume that a lot of it's probably the same. You know, as we already know that, you know, with the change in laws where they started to deport people for felony crimes back to Mexico, there's a lot more homeboys that are now in Mexico. Therefore, there's a lot of different, a lot of different pipelines that are coming into San Jose. Pretty much, the government, with their desire to start deporting everybody, you know, during the um, Obama administration, they pretty much have set it up to where it's made it easier for gangs in Northern California and places like San Jose, with individuals now in Mexico establishing pipelines and resources. Whereas, whereas before, man, you were lucky to have that type of pipeline or resource. Anyhow, very different era. Back then, the San Jose police used to, you know, turn a cheek on a lot of issues out there. There was a lot of individuals that were, you know, running rackets. They were running the illicit adventures and whatnot. And you would really have to be putting yourself out there like a sore thumb for them to start to fucking draw their attention. But I think what changed a lot of it was basically those 1990 indictments. That changed everything, okay? That's when they got a little too reckless out there and they just got a little too ha gun happy and started just whacking everybody. And as people should know, bloodshed out there in the streets and violence is sometimes bad for business because all it does is bring police scrutiny. Some people wanted to um, uphold the old reputation, you know, for being treacherous and taking people out and going above and beyond what the organization is expecting, but... Through time in history, we've seen what the results hap the results that happen when people go through this course of action. Nothing good comes of it. That's why you're starting to see a little bit of different type of, uh, you know, tactics and antics that people use today. As opposed to like 20, 30 years ago, it was all met with violence. Violence and money. You could pretty much pay for whatever you wanted. You had power with, with the money that you had. Nowadays, that doesn't mean shit. 
Nowadays, like I said, the San Jose Italian mob is pretty much dead. They're not out there, you know. They're all retired or moved out the area or, or just doing time. So, uh, you know, their presence is no longer a factor. But at one time, they were out there and they did have a relationship with the homeboys in the NF. With that said, it's your boy Flacco, Converse Perspective, I'm gone.